Welcome to How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships from True Story FM. Today, we're taking on the momentous matter of material. How do you split your stuff? Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Seth Nelson, as always, with my good friend, Pete Wright. How are you doing, Pete? I'm doing very well, Seth. I'm excited about our conversation today, if only because, yet again, I had a, a, a dear friend reach out to me saying they found the podcast uh, at, by way of some social thing that I shared, and they've been listening to it because they're in the middle of a, of a divorce process themselves and uh, had some very kind things to say uh, about you and told me the story that absolutely plays into what we're doing today, and, and I thought I, I might... In, open with it and see what you have to say. What do you think? Absolutely. I'm sorry that your friend's going through a divorce and they must have been drinking, saying nice things about me. So I'm concerned <laughs> about them, but <laughs> fire away. What are they dealing with, my friend? So they're they're outside of Boston and this was just all pretty raw. It was just about four weeks ago that uh, she moved out. Uh, my, my friend's soon to be former spouse moved out. Uh, into a house a couple miles away, and uh, they're not struggling over time, time with the kids, parenting. They're not struggling with with money, bank accounts, that kind of stuff. They're struggling over stuff. And he said this thing that struck me, and I've been it's kind of been going over in my mind. He said, "I know that we are fetishizing the past, but we just can't agree on where to split even the smallest stuff around the house. Trinkets, tchotchkes, whatever. We can't figure it out. We will find a way to destroy any conversation we have when we talk about this stuff. And uh, I feel for him. Right. And he's OK. He's OK. You bring this up on the show. I don't want, you know, friendships to be. Nope, I, absolutely. In fact, okay. I'm sure I will get a bottle of wine out of this uh, for telling a story <laughs> nice. in public. Yeah. So that yeah. can go to 400 North Tampa Street. <laughs> Tampa. <laughs> From a lawyer's perspective, and I really want to talk about different ways to split this up. This is a great question that everybody deals with. And there's different ways that people deal with it. There's no right or wrong. They're just different. Get rid of the concept of fair. Let's start with that. But most lawyers that I've talked to, and I know I'm in this category, this is one of the least favorite things to do because the amount of money you're going to pay me to talk about items that mostly have no real value. Yeah. And now I'm going to tell you a little Florida law. You know what I'm going to say, right, Pete? Check What's your local jurisdictions. And there you go. Check your Everybody local jurisdictions. Everybody playing bingo along with us. <laughs> um, but in Florida family law, when we talk about personal property, it is garage sale value. Now, if you have an antique that has value or a watch collection that has value or or art that has real value that you can get appraised, th those are one thing. But if we're talking about the couch, if we're talking about the plate, we're talking garage sale value. So the only people that hate dealing with this more than, ju than lawyers are judges. Like yeah. they're really like dividing this up. So well, but, let me ask you. Let me ask you on that point, though. It's garage sale value, but the stuff that does have value, let's say art or you know, I don't know, comic books, whatever you've got, like it's only real value if somebody is is there who's willing to sell it, right? Well, what happens in dividing of assets in Florida is equitable distribution. You're dividing up your assets. So let's say you have a piece of artwork that's worth a hundred dollars, okay, and you have a hundred dollars in a bank account. And the problem comes, it, no problem if you say, I want the artwork and my soon-to-be former spouse can have the bank account. You each get $100 worth of value, mm -hmm. okay? The problem is when you both want the artwork. That thing is, that's that's the proverbial toaster. You can't, you can't split that. Exactly, exactly. So in my, in my hypothetical, it's almost impossible because there's only one thing. Yeah. Okay. But most people have more than one thing. Most of us have way too many things. Yeah. So there's a number of different ways you can divide up your personal belongings. One way is that you each individually make a list of what you want. Do not discuss it or share it with the other person until the lists are complete. Okay. 
and be honest with yourself on things that you really want. And you can put it down as in, here are my big priorities. Here are the things mm, I'd like to have. I don't really care. Or, you know, I'd like to have, but mm, maybe we can split some of them. And here are things I just don't care about. Or you can just make a list. This is what I want. And the reason why I encourage people to go through and make a list of just the things that they want is, and not share it with the other person, is it will hopefully, if you're being honest with yourself, that you are just going to take the things you want and not just put something on the list that you know the other person wants as a negotiating ploy. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you know that you both love cooking and you both have this favorite pan and it's the same pan, the one you always go to, okay, I see where that might be on the list. But if you don't like cooking and you're putting all the pans on your list just to piss your spouse off, yeah, that's not really being helpful in trying to get this resolved. Well, that's okay? that's what it sounds like is is uh, the, the source of a lot of conflict, right? I mean, it's this idea that you are, there are other reasons that you are, fetishizing the past that you're you're uh, have an, an attachment to your stuff and it's not the stuff it's not the stuff stuff symbolizes things it reminds me of this trip or of x or of yeah. y so uh, you got to let some of that go in your head as well so when it comes to the stuff if you make your own list and what's interesting about that pete is i would encourage you being friends with these people is to go in there and say, I'm going to help you through this. You each make your own list and you give it to me. And then what you do, Pete, is you combine the lists and you have two, you have three highlighters. One, just easy for me to remember, blue for boy, pink for girl, okay? Everything your buddy wanted, you highlight in blue. You actually have four highlighters. Everything that the wife wanted, you highlight in pink as long as they're not uh, individual both wanting individual, right? Yeah. If there's something they both want, this is how I work it. I highlight it in yellow because yellow, I still know I have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Now, I asked you for the fourth highlighter. There's four. One for her, one for him, one, for one him. that's still in controversy. What's the fourth one for? It's a quiz. Uh, it, the, so him, her, controversy means they both want it. Yep, that's and the, the fourth yellow. one is going to be stuff that is that is uh, I don't know recyclable. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, fourth like one we know stuff. we're going to sell it and get the monetary value out of it. Fourth one is neither one of them put it on their list. It's oh. <laughs> all their stuff that they don't want, which you get to walk away with. Yeah, you just tell them I get all this other. I stuff. I get all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. I get more stuff. Money in you the bank. You would be baby. surprised how much stuff neither party wants. So it's the stuff that they're fighting about is a portion of the stuff that, that it's not even all the stuff. It might not even be all the stuff. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now let's deal with the conflicted issues. Yes. Right. It can be like you're dealing with your children, right? One, you flip a coin. Who picks first? Now, is this just in Florida jurisdiction or is this everywhere? No, this is just ways to get things <laughs> settled, right? You flip a coin. You know, if I'm flipping a coin with you, Pete, I'm going to say heads I win, tails yeah. you lose. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to so, say, OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But you flip a coin on who gets to pick first. They pick one item, then you pick one item. They pick one item and you pick one item and you go through the stuff. And then at the end, if you want to say you want to trade anything, you can. But those items are divided. That's one way to do it. At what point do you just say, you guys are children, You neither of you get any stuff, we're going to sell it and split the money? Well, only a, a judge is, only a judge is going to tell them that. Oh, right? right. You wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. You I might tell say, them that a judge is going to do that if you don't learn to cooperate. I'm, and I've been in trial where a judge said, not only am I not going to tell you to sell it, I'm going to have you pick it up and donate it to charity. Which oh. is not allowed to happen under Florida family law. Yeah. But the judge knows that that's what she's going to order. And she also knows that we're not going to spend the money appealing it. And so it kind of makes a way to work out. Yeah. I've had trials where the judge said, make your list of everything you want. And the judge went through and highlighted, like I said, blue and pink on the stuff that was not in controversy. Mm -hmm. 
here's what the wife wanted, here's what the husband wanted, and then there was the stuff in controversy. She took those lists and she said, I'm awarding everything the wife wanted that was not in controversy to the husband, everything the husband wanted to the wife, and here's what I'm doing with the rest. Wow. Like, she just flipped them. She was so annoyed that she was dealing with this stuff. Well, this gets to that thing you started with earlier, that lawyers hate dealing with this. Sounds like everybody hates dealing with this. The judges hate dealing with it. The um, mediators find it very difficult. Okay. Here are some things I would advise not to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Talk with your lawyer. So I'm not giving you legal advice. This is practical advice. Do not have an item that you are going to share. I love that artwork. You can hang it in your house for the first six months. Custody for for your stuff, Seth. That sounds horrible. Yeah, and it's happened. And it's usually memorabilia type stuff. Yeah. So pictures, chilled pictures of kids, okay? Make copies, scan them in. Literally, some of that things, some of those things can be reproduced, right? If you have a photo, you can scan it these days. Great. Okay. Um, any items that you gave to the other person as a gift during your marriage, ready? Check your local jurisdiction. In Florida, it's not a full gift. If you give your wife um, some earrings on the first anniversary of your, your wedding anniversary worth a thousand dollars, making up a number here for easy math Mm -hmm. and you get divorced, she wants the earrings. That's fine. And they're worth a thousand bucks. She owes you 500. Yeah. Okay. Only in the great, I don't know only, but in the great state of Florida, you can't give your spouse a full gift because when you get divorced, you can get half the value back. Wow. Now, what I would say, being the nice Jewish boy that I am, like be a mensch. You gave her the earrings. Let her keep the earrings. Don't ask for the 500 bucks. Yeah. Right. right. A, gift is a, she, a gift is a gift. Uh, a gift is a gift. Maybe not in Florida, gift. but kind of. Right. Not under Florida science. family law. <laughs> yeah. I mean. That so, hurts my heart a little uh, bit. Uh, right. Now, what about that picture that you guys bought on your honeymoon? You both loved it. And you were right? married at the time. Like some of this. Right. That would be divided by a court. Who gets what? Judges hate dealing with it. Okay. okay. So. One, you can do what we call an A-B list. Everybody makes their own list and you do the highlighter deal. Two, you can just start picking one, the other. You each take turns. And this is how, I'm going to say ridiculous, that, but it's emotional. So I get it when you're in the emotional state. But this is where your brain and your your grief is all getting in the way of what most people would be like, really, we're arguing about this. Mm-hmm. It, because you're just in it. I get it. And I'm not discounting that feeling for people. I understand it. I appreciate it. And when you're the outside looking in, it's very easy for us to say, really, you're arguing over wine glasses? Like it's the wagon wheel coffee words. table. It's, it's oh, uh, when Harry met Sally. Wh- yes. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he's carrying it out. Right? Yeah, I want the wagon wheel copy. But this is the this is the thing that I think is so fascinating too is is that um, y- this approach to personal property to figuring out your stuff it gets back to the question that started us off that you uh, your ability to navigate this particular minefield could in many other ways damage an otherwise healthy divorce process. People who aren't fighting over the kids, who aren't fighting over the monetary assets, they are fighting over stupid stuff, wagon wheel, coffee table. Right. And when they go to do the AB list, they're really smart. They're like, oh, we listened to Seth and Pete, you know, on the podcast. We listened to the toaster. Mm -hmm. Let's do AB. And he says, I'm making this up, of course. He says, okay, I'll take the lawnmower. One item very specific. She says, I'll take all the Christmas decorations. Like she just lumped them into one category. Yeah. Right. Are we going to go, you know, year by year and say, "Mm, I get the kids first year, you get their second year. Right. And ultimately, most of this stuff, if you have children, it's going to hopefully get passed down to them. So you're really just holding it for how long till you give it to your kids? That's right. It's going in the attic for, you know, about 15, 20 years. Right. Yeah. So... Um, most of this stuff is just stuff. 
Now, I'm talking about your own personal stuff. And remember, we talked to Jamie Blumenthal about um, interior design. Mm -hmm. I also would say be practical. If you're going from a large house to a townhouse or to an apartment, do you really want to take all this other stuff and put it in storage? Right. Now you have added expenses. Like what? What is really important to you, and right. why you are never? I uh, do not try to even do what I'm about to say. Do not try to persuade the other person why you should get the item more than they should. You're not going to persuade the other side that you're right and they're wrong on that issue. You're just asking for conflict. But I don't want to set the stage too prematurely here, but we're uh, we're about to have a conversation with somebody who specializes in pet custody. Are pets considered personal property? In Florida, yep. Of course they it, are. It like, of course, right? It just breaks your heart. This is, and I am a huge dog lover. Yeah. So this this is hard. And, and we are going to be talking to someone who focuses on pets, which I'm really excited for that conversation. In Florida, it is it is what it is. Now, yeah. most people do figure that out. Usually somebody is more kind of tied to the dogs, for example, right? Or the other one says, I love this dog, but I, I, I can't handle it. I've got, I'm going to yeah. have two little kids now and a dog. Like, no. Yeah, keep or I'm dog. moving into a smaller or, or, space right. or whatever. Right, I don't right. have a backyard, right? Like we always say, focus on the kids, kind of focus on the dog too. But we're going to yeah. have a whole conversation about that. Um, which, I, like I said, I'm very excited to have that uh, in the coming weeks here. The other thing to think about when you're talking about personal property in Florida, check your local jurisdiction, as I always say. But if I receive a gift for my birthday from my parents, let's say, that's actually non-marital. That was a gift from a third party to me. Mm -hmm. So I would just get to keep that. Now, if my parents gave us an anniversary gift that's to both of us. That's, that's marital, marital property to get divided, okay? Like we said, if you give a gift to your spouse in Florida, it's marital property. It gets divided. Be a mensch on that. Gifts are gifts, like we said. But also, anything you inherit in Florida is yours because that's a gift from a third party to you, even though they've already been they've de deceased, mm -hmm. right? So... You know, if you have family heirlooms that came from one side of the family for the piece of yourself in getting through this process, leave it with the person who the fa family heirloom is. Okay. okay. All right. Now, the other thing about that list is the old thing that we do with kids, right? Um, you have a brownie, one brownie, one kid splits, the other kid chooses. Yeah. Right. M make the, like, you can sell someone. You can make both lists, A and B. The other person gets to select it. Wow. You're now going to be fair. And they fair. should, if they have kids, they should figure, they should know that's coming. That's right. Yeah. Right. Now, Laura Gallagher would say, well, that's not dealing with interest because if you have an orange, I told her I would split it in the middle. And she said, wait, peel it. Somebody wanted the peel for baking and the other yeah. wanted the orange to eat, right? Right, right. But if you're going to split and choose, that's a good way to make this an even list. Somebody makes the list on everything, A and B list, and the other person gets to pick. What what say, and I'm, I don't want to say is not the right word, I'm sure, but influence do you have as an attorney over a, a couple that's struggling with this? Well, I, I'll talk to my clients and give them all the different suggestions I just gave you. Sure. And I'll also explain to them that and people do lose sight of this when they're in the just clutches of the divorce there's more at stake there's more stuff to be divided than the items you're talking about and what i mean by that is you only have so much money so if we're going to hire lawyers or mediators or everyone to talk about this stuff you might get a division of the stuff the way you ultimately wanted it but now you're going to have Five three thousand dollars less to divide because you spend it on the professionals to help you get through that process. So is it worth the three grand? I'll tell people all the time, they want the dishes. You're going to pay me my hourly rate to go argue about dishes. Just go buy beautiful new ones. Yeah, they're going to be the nicest dishes you've ever had because you didn't have to pay me. Right, right. 
keep your money, spend it on you. Don't spend it on the Lord, divide up your personal property. This is different than things of whatever you in your own personal life deem significant value. So I'm not talking art collections worth tens, twenties, thirty thousand dollars. I'm not talking fancy watch collections or jewelry that might be a lot of money, right? Um, that type of stuff you might want to get valued because one spouse is walking away with so much that you might want some on the other side. Other people are like, it was gifts. I'm going to let it go. I hear you. But I, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, trinkets. Trinkets. Yeah. At some point, the couple has to come to terms with the fact that the value to them together in completing the divorce is higher than fighting over the stuff. But I imagine when you start the divorce process that the scales are tilted the other way. Like you want to... Absolutely. And not only that, people will get to that decision at different times. One spouse might be like, I should get all the half this stuff or this or that. You know what? I, it's not worth it to me that with the argument, you can have it all. Right. Right. So I'm just finished. I'm just done talking about it. Let's just move on. I'm yeah. done. You can have it all. And it eats at them later because then they, when you look back, people have quote buyer's remorse because they think about, oh, this is what I gave up, but they forget They're that divorced. they didn't have to go through the process. Well, and also they didn't they didn't really know the pain of that process, right? They knew they kind of had a sense when they said, oh, I'm done, that they wouldn't have to go through it. But they don't know what they missed and how bad it it really could have gotten. Correct. Correct. And so there certainly is that. And there's all these kind of power dynamics and emotional abuse that people go through when they're negotiating this stuff like those relationship intricacies between people spouses don't change. In fact, they're probably heightened during a divorce. Yeah. If someone's manipulative, they're really going to be manipulative when they're dividing this stuff, right? And they know, you. everybody knows what buttons to push on the other party, right? I mean, you've been with them for how many years? You, you don't think you know what sets them off? Why are you going to set them off? Yeah. And this does go back to something that I think we talked about a long time ago. Be nice, It's hard, but be nice to your soon-to-be former spouse. If you think that you're wanting them to do things for you, that you want something from them, it's a whole lot easier to get something from somebody if you're nice to them than if you're mean to them. This is not a um, new novel concept I just said, (laughs) right? Yeah, right. Hey. I know we both might want this. It would really mean a lot to me if you would allow me to take it so we don't have to fight about it. Yeah. That's a whole lot better than I'm taking it. It's fine. What What is uh, or is there a sub- substantial difference in uh, uh, managing stuff between your first divorce and let's say your second or third? Oh, diminishing returns. Like you keep coming and keep dividing and dividing. It, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> right. I guess like, uh, I, 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 guess I wasn't leaning half. on that. I was just leaning, is this, is, is it, does it get easier? I think as people go through the process, but also anything you bring into the marriage in most jurisdictions is going to be yours. So on the second marriage, when you bring stuff in, okay, we all know that it's yours. What typically happens in second and third marriages, um, depending on the age and where people are in their careers and um, amassing retirement accounts or savings accounts, or they have a business already, is that's where you deal with prenups. So let me just talk through that process because it's a great question you asked. It's very common in prenups where if you give the gift during the marriage, it's it's non-marital property, it's a gift, right? So we, we, we solve that problem. We also solve the problem of anything that has a title to it. If we buy a car jointly, but we title it only in my name, it's mine. Even though it might be under marital law, an asset of the parties to be divided, marital property. Um, Uh, Maybe even, you know, maybe it's in my name, but she drives the car the most. Right, exactly. Or, you know, there's a lot of reasons. Like in Florida family law, if you buy a car during the marriage, 
with marital money, no matter whose name it's titled in, it's marital property. Mm -hmm. You don't win or lose marital versus non-marital based on title alone. And there's a lot of reasons that people will title a car in only one person's name because then only that one person could be liable for that accident, not the other party. So there's a lot of other legal stuff to go along with that. But so in a prenup, you typically do that. Then no one, it's in a lot of prenups, but you really have to be careful about this and keep receipts as ridiculous as this is going to sound. Whoever purchased it from their account is the one who owns it because some things won't have title. Wow. Right. If you go and buy a nice watch, you don't get a certificate of title to the watch. Sure. Right. Um, If you buy a piece of artwork on your honeymoon, but it came from your account, Pete, and not your wife's, you're going to get that. Okay. But But then that counts for everything. Let's say, let's say we save and save and suddenly I buy a, you know, $1,200 blender, right? A kitchen chef's quality blender right that, that thing that, better do the laundry for you too i mean come yeah, on right. 1, bucks for a blender right i know i'm fetishizing a blender right now but i'm just saying <laughs> like if i if i spend that kind of coin on a blender but it comes out of my account not our joint account that's that's my blender that's your blender right so go keep track of all that because that's fun to do like yeah and who that's does my that point. who does that rationally like i just like I, i'm not i don't keep track of stuff that right so that well and remember as much as we're saying, really, how do you do this? Why would you do this? And we're, I'm not making light of this in any way. This is real emotional problems that people go through when they're getting a divorce. The focus should be, one, do you really want this thing? And what is it? What is driving that want? Okay. If we're going to argue about it, is it worth it? I've had some, but in this is classic where somebody was wanted all the stuff and they're like that's fine take it all like everything everything in the house other than my clothes and my personal stuff all yours the furniture the dishes all yours but i'm keeping the house so you got to move it all out well then that tune changed right because you've got practical problems with this stuff so just kind of really think about what do you want do you really need it is it end up being is you going to end up donating it a year from now anyway? Is it going to be something passed down to the kids? Can you make kind of a handshake deal that you're going to give it to the kids? Sure. What there's there's different things cuz none of us are going to take all our possessions to the grave. So how long do you really want to have these things? Yeah. And at right. what point do you have things that are just you're not going to have anymore? Like it's just not that important. The things you had that when you were 20 and 30, you probably don't have a lot of those things now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if only. Right. <laughs> this is a little walk down memory lane. If only I had my Pink Floyd vinyl collection and that hookah. <laughs> right. Oh, God. You had me with the Pink Floyd. You lost me on the hookah, brother. <laughs> Well, this is, I I think this is helpful. If there's any one last thing that you want to make sure you reinforce for, uh, let's say for my friend in Boston who's going through this process and struggling with it, what's that one thing you want him to go forward with? uh, 8 a.m. Monday morning. Less is more. Be a minimalist. Less is more. That's right. Get through it. So I hope this was helpful. It's such a touchy thing. If people are listening, I get it when they're like, really, you're just making light of this stuff. Yeah. And on on the back end, you know, when you're moving that wagon wheel coffee table. Yeah. Let yeah. me tell you, there's no way we're going to devote time on this podcast to talk about something that's just a joke. It's serious. And we're doing two episodes on it because we're talking about animals next week. I can't wait to do that. Yeah, looking forward to it. Seth Nelson, thank you for uh, your time and insights, my friend. May it please the court. May it please the court. Thanks, brother. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We appreciate your time and attention. We'll see you next week right here on How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships. Seth Nelson is an attorney with Nelson Coster Family Law and Mediation with offices in Tampa, Florida. While we may be discussing family law topics, how to split a toaster is not intended to, nor is it providing legal advice. 
Every situation is different. If you have specific questions regarding your situation, please seek your own legal counsel with an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction. Pete Wright is not an attorney or employee of Nelson Coster. Seth Nelson is licensed to practice law in Florida.